Casey. Let's get the whiteboard out. Ah, fuck you. Okay, let's burn a little bit. Well, what the fuck is this kind of thing then? Surprise, surprise, surprise. No. So, as seen in the last video, I did lots of work, so that was not too bad, but there were a lot of people coming into the shop and I was distracted a lot of the times, so I couldn't do as many hours as I normally do. I think we did Thursday around 5 hours and probably Friday the same. So. For the amount that was done, it was okay, but not what's planned. But what I promised, we did the first upgrades. So we did, did a rear brake axle and carbon fiber. So I'm going to put this in another corner because these are stuff, the non-standard stuff. You don't need to do them for a restoration. So we keeping them, them apart, of course they will add up at the end. So the rear brake axle was 150 euros and the carbon fiber 1750 euros. So this will add up quickly and you don't really need that. <coughs> okay, so I'm still figuring out some sheet metal parts that I'm going to buy in. So they will of course will add up at the board for sure. Let me know if I need to put in some small, smaller parts like welding material, small sheet metal, how much those costs are or did you, do you guys think, well, we can understand what that will cost. For now I will only put in the hours, the bigger materials and the buy-in materials. But so far, so good. So it's a little bit crazy and I don't want to get all the episodes with only just sheet metal work because there's so much stuff to do on the sheet metal. So this episode will be some sheet metal and preparing the parts. But of course I'm not going to leave them standard because we are non-standard and we got some ideas on what we've done before and we want to adjust those ideas on the GSI as well. So I've got over here Lots of parts that will go to the powder coater, but we need to prep them. Press the bushings out and get all the bearings out, get the stuff out for the galvanizing. So let's start with that. Let's start with the rear axle, pulling all the front axles in pieces and send them to the right addresses to powder coat and galvanizing. Holy shit, why is this so heavy? some grinding and welding but I want to get the bushings out as well because we're going to replace them and well these are old and worn but they tend to go pretty bad on stucking in the rear axle I'm going to look back scroll back to some films on how I did it the last time on the green estate and 17 ish Okay. 
the back, put the back, put the back, put the back. It's already powder coated over here, so I need to. Okay, here's the rear axle. Okay, that's already out. I thought I made some movies over here. It's still in. Okay. Here we are. Ah, I did it in a vice. Okay. That's a smart idea, you smart ass. I pressed it out in the vice with the still. Yeah, alright. Okay, so no, this is not the most handiest of places yet for the vice. But with rearranging the shop and get it better for the automotive stuff, we got to do it on how far we are right now. So, yeah, we got to work in the corner a little bit. Let me look at my crazy pictures of how I did this and then work on that. It's crap. That's not going to work. You need to press that one. I'm living my own terrible idea. coming out but I'm probably going to need a bigger bushing because if I look at this we'll press the steel out but not the bushing a lot okay still coming <laughs> told you so that what it wasn't easy going to use a socket Make that over there. I think it's stuck under rubber. Because there's some room in the socket, so that it's a little bit crooked. Doesn't matter. Okay, let's burn a little bit. I think we're up now. On to the next, and that is getting the rest apart. And one rear axle will turn apart. So these parts will have to galvanizing. These I will clean up and save apart because well, they're almost new. They haven't used much. So I can reuse them. These I'm going to ship out to let them refurbished. And same like the brake disc, I think I'm going to put them in the lathe because there isn't even an edge in them. They're like new. Okay, we need to hammer and dolly these in a better shape and they can go off the powder coat. And then let's clear out the bushings and the other stuff that's over here. One day I'm going to make my own control arms with a ball joint raised from 30 millimeters but for now I'm going to use this because I don't know how much time this restoration will cost and how much time we will have at the end because I still have the deadline and I want to make it quick and not taking forever the whole year we need to drive it this year so let's take these apart yes. Ah, fuck you! That's why I don't want my vice over here anymore. Crap. So, cut the final one drilled completely out. Oh, that's why I need
I should probably give you guys a better example than I was doing right now. So the best way to do this is to center point the big rift nuts first so you will be in the center and you will be way closer with drilling them out. I was just doing it quick because I know on experience a little bit on how far I can go. But if you've never done this before, it's better to use a center point. Position. Let's try if we're lucky with this one as well. Nope. Okay, I just took a piece of pipe. Let's see if my handy work. We'll get this in. Okay, so the rubber is in. Hopefully it stays there. Well, that's working. So, and then, we got these bad boys. So these are my new air at truck which I made last year. So I pressed in new bearings of course. Now with this crazy idea of rebuilding it, uh, what should I do? I like the galvanized, the hubs, powder coat, the struts, but that means new bearings again. From the factory or from wrenching uh, to get the steering rack loosened they always hammer on the side not my kind of thing but now we're powder coating them anyway let's clean them up a little bit well I seem to do a lot of wheel bearings lately. Get these bastard off. Oh, these are easy. So the table is getting pretty packed with all the stuff. Am I going to big break or upgrade it a little bit? Or am I going to leave them standard for now? Shift. Sure. Where's the end of this? Rebuilt, right? Well, this became pretty packed. Powder coating need to add some more stuff over there. Brakes to send away. Stuff to save here in the shop to clean out later. And then send away. Powder coating. Not sure yet. Clean up. Clean up. Well, that's getting there. Since everybody said to me, don't go all crazy, keep some stuff original, we're going to save the brake booster, send stuff out for powder coating and probably going to paint the brake booster itself. And on we go. Probably better from this side. around again. Well, what the fuck is this kind of thing then? Hm. I've seen my fair share, but I'm used to one plate that covers those two. Never seen it like this before. 
maybe a newer model or something. But I never seen this before. Galvanizing everything nowadays, so. Okay, so as you can see, I just didn't think about it. I was just going ahead and make it go as fast as possible to get this restoration done. But you can see in this video on how many parts there are. It's actually kind of crazy. It's just a never ending story on parts to sort through, which parts go to powder coat, which parts go to galvanizing. Then after that, I will be spending a half a day at the office ordering the new parts like ball joints, steering joints, uh, new rubbers, um, new bearings and so on and so on. So this way you can see how much work restoration takes and how it is the best way to sort the parts, get the parts ready. And normally I would take pictures of all the nuts and bolts and which one needs to go where. But nowadays I have it on video, so if I can't remind anything, I can always look, look it back up. Luckily for me, with the cadet, I think I know every nut and bolt where to place it, so that's no problem. Let's go ahead, get the final pieces out in the bins and ship the bins out next week. Okay, so the rinsing color is damaged a little bit and of course we can buy a new one but the once in a lifetime we, were, we are adjusting this and the once in a lifetime I'm going to well pull this back together. I don't think it's necessary to replace this, just fix it up a little bit. But this is just... All it takes to turn is this, and if it goes not as smooth as this, then there's something wrong. Every time you do stuff, there are surprises. <coughs> so this one is with fine thread. This one, I guess, should be with fine thread as well. As you see how damaged the threads are, it was not working, so there was a the wrong bolt in there. Surprise, surprise, surprise! So in the steering arm there's fine thread in it and in the steering joints there are, there's a bigger thread. So I need to figure out a new bolt. And remember that, that we changed it up. Oh, it's on camera. Better safe than sorry. I got the crate with cadet parts. I think I can find a bolt in here. Oh, look at this. How lucky bastard. How fast is this? And here we go again with inventing and adjusting stuff. So we want to press the rubbers out of the steering arms. So get some bushing. Cut this pipe. And this will just fit over the rubber, so we can press it out. So cut out a piece and put it in the vise. Well, okay, that is a complete day on collecting part, putting all the parts together, on which part goes where. Uh, it's now Friday and there's only around four or five hours left for today's job. And I don't want to bother you with all the parts anymore. So let's get some sheet metal work done. Because we want to, to keep that on the floor as well. So let's see what we can discover in the arts. Under rust over there. And of course we grind down all the spot welds so we can prime that and they won't rust anymore. Okay, that's 
it's all grinded down, ready for some primer. Now let's see if we can tackle all these spot welds. Those are a lot. So this is the rust point, all the way up to there, and these are all spot welds. Ooh. Just uh, start drilling, I guess. So now, there's this tricky part. So this should all come all the way to over here. And if I just cut it out, I don't know the exact shape anymore. Now isn't it that important? But I always find it kind of cool to get the original shapes back and get it all back in. So I'm going to make sure that we got this shape before we start cutting. Another crazy metal shaping trick, kind of easy. You take a driver, put it behind the sheet metal, clamp it in, and just hammer it, uh, hammer it down. So we got this right corner over here. So now let's see if we're getting close. Okay. This is kind of a nice shape. We can clean it out a little bit. But let's first see if you cut it out what's all behind it. kind of okay-ish. We can repair this. So we can repair this corner. And then put the other corner above. Well, since it's all crazy, I was thinking I'll take the steering rack mount off as well. So we can work behind it and repair all the corners. Yay. This can only mean more rust. Fucking hell. Well, that's it for this episode. This crazy week brought me so much challenges and so much new cool stuff. This is one thing that was happening this week. We got a client all the way from the UK and brought a rally, which he bought in Germany. How crazy is this? And the specialty of it all is we're going to build in an Audi RS3 engine. Later on, more about this project, but here you can see it coming into the shop, being delivered late on a Saturday evening. I'm really proud of what's happening right now on the YouTube channel and with the progress of all the projects. The Mark II left the shop, the Mark III left the shop, and we're full pull on building more cool stuff. They both will come back really soon. The Mark III is at the paint shop, Mark II. All the interior bits will already be put in and some other work's been done and then, when that's all done it will be back to the final assembly so it can drive this year as well. So Mark II, Mark III and a new Mark II 
And of course, my cadet, lots of progress as you've seen in the episode. Not done as much sheet metal as I wanted, but there's a lot of progress on all the parts. Now it's off to finalizing the parts. Oh, and check this out. From a 14 year old new tuner life boy, he was just one day internship and I let him disassemble the engine. So look how crazy this is now. It was so dirty. And he started cleaning out the gearbox. So they're all pretty naked. There's so much stuff going on. Arranging, ordering, and still get the sheet metal work going. Well, I must say thank you all for watching this episode. Like and subscribe to the channel. And see you in the next episode. Bye.